In this video, I am going to discuss about Johnson's Behavioral System Model Part 2. Already I have published a, a video that is part 1 in which we have uh, actually discussed regarding the concepts and uh, the various uh, explanations of the uh, concepts and the theoretical assertions of the model. So in this part 2 video I am going to discuss about the assumptions, the propositions, strength and limitations of this theory, analysis or critic and an introduction to nursing process using Johnson's behavioral system model. Now, uh, first, even before we go on to assumptions and propositions, let us quickly uh, review with just uh, two or three slides what were the main essence of this behavioral system model. So, all of you would have watched in a part one video that uh, Johnson believed that every human being is a behavioral system. Okay, so she viewed one human being as a behavioral system with various subsystems. Okay, so one man is considered to be one behavioral system and within this behavioral system, there are a lot of subsystems. To be specific, Johnson said that there are eight subsystems within a person. So, uh, we also had a detailed discussion on each of the subsystems according to Johnson's model, that is affiliation, dependency subsystems system, sexuality, aggression subsystem, elimination, injection, achievement and the last restorative subsystem which Johnson added later. Okay, so these are the uh, subsystems which are coming under Johnson's behavioral system. We also had a discussion that uh, this each subsystem like for example affiliation subsystem, each subsystem is going to have a structure and a functional requirement. Okay, so all the eight subsystems will have a structural requirement. There is also a <clears throat> functional requirement. So, in structural requirement, Johnson said that there are four things which are there. One is drive, set, choice, action or behavior. So, again, this was explained in detail in the previous video. Okay. So, structural requirement includes drive, set, choice and action or behavior. Whereas, functional requirement, Johnson said that there are mainly three functional requirements. That is, number one is to protect an organism from noxious stimuli. Number two is every behavioral system has a need to nurture it, okay, to help them to grow, to nurture and then to stimulate. So, this is what we discussed in detail in part one video. So, even before we go on to assumptions, this concept should be clear to us. That is, according to Johnson, one human being is considered as a behavioral system and within this behavioral system, there are several subsystems, that is eight subsystems. Each subsystem has a structure, each subsystem has a functional requirement. Structural requirement are four, okay, that is set, choice, drive and action and functional requirement is three, that is to protect, to nurture and then to stimulate. Now, uh, this is the model which is given by Johnson where she said that there are certain stress, there are certain forces in the environment and these stress or these env uh, environmental influence can affect the seven subsystems or the eight subsystems. Okay, So, even before she added restorative subsystem in 1986, Johnson gave this pictorial representation where there are only seven subsystems and she said that any stress from the environment can affect these seven subsystems and what is going to happen? The system is trying to maintain a balance, okay. The seven subsystems say for example within me when there is an environmental stress it tries to maintain a balance. So, if there is a balance what happens there is effective functioning and there is adaptation that is the output. But suppose if there is an ineffective uh, coping or ineffective uh, functioning, what will happen? This ends up with a behavioral disorder or further stress can happen which can further affect the subsystem. So, it is like a vicious cycle where there are certain influences in the environment which can alter our behavioral subsystems. But if we are able to overcome it, if we are able to effectively function, automatically an or uh, what is in uh, behavioral uh, system is found to be in order or it is in equilibrium. But on the other hand, if it is going to be an ineffective functioning, further stress, further behavioral disorders can 
the result. Okay, so this is the quick summary about Johnson's behavioral system model. Now let us study what are the assumptions, what are the propositions. Now as postgraduate students, okay, usually for exam, there are certain theories, there are certain models where you may get a question on uh, 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 discuss the assumptions or discuss the proposition. So, already I have told that Roy's adaptation model, we have to study the assumptions and the proposition. Same way, Imogen M. King's theory, we have specific assumptions and propositions. Similar to that is Johnson's model, where she has specifically given four assumptions related to behavioral system and also certain propositions. So, let us look into it. Now, uh, even before I start with the assumptions, uh, if you are a student watching this video, I would like to tell you that uh, uh, Johnson has actually divided the assumptions into three sets. Okay, what are they? Assumptions about the system, assumptions about the structure, assumptions about the functional requirement. Okay, now in this video, I am going to discuss only about assumptions related to system. Okay, because structure and function is something similar to what we studied in previous video. That structural requirement has four, functional has three. Those are the assumptions. Okay, so what we have to study something in new is assumptions related to behavioral system. So let us see what were the assumptions of Johnson. She said, there is organization, there is interaction, there is interdependency and there is integration of the parts of the elements of behaviors that goes to make up the subsystem. So, Johnson believed that like for example, if it is an affiliative subsystem or if it is a dependency subsystem, okay, it is an organized and there is an interdependency and integration between the subsystems. Like for example, a person who is highly attached, who is having a very good love and respect, you know, like affiliation, social inclusion, automatically their dependency subsystem can also be affected. Okay, like if the ingestive subsystem is going to be affected, eliminative subsystem can also be affected, which means that she believed that all these subsystems are interdependent. All these subsystems are working in an organized way. If there is an interaction, there is an interdependency, at the same time they work together. Okay, so a person with a very good say for example affiliative subsystem may also work well with dependency subsystem like that okay so there is a like how we say you know the respiratory system the gastrointestinal system they work together cardiovascular system respiratory system they are interdependent they are working in an organized way same way johnson believed behavioral subsystems are also working in such a way that there is interdependency there is integration there is organization. Now, let us look on to the second assumption given by Johnson. A system tends to achieve a balance among the various forces operating within it, among various forces operating upon it and continuously strives to maintain an equilibrium. So, what is the meaning of this uh, point? It is very easy. Johnson says that a behavioral system, that is a man, okay, a human being is always striving, okay, we are always striving continuously in order to maintain an equilibrium between all the subsystems. That is the assumption according to Johnson. So, what is the first thing she said? Each subsystem is going to work integrative, it is going to work in an organized way, it is going to work in an interdependent way right? That is the first assumption. The second assumption what she believed is a system is trying to achieve a balance. How does the system tries to achieve a balance? We all try to maintain that balance between say uh, the uh, ingestive system, uh, between the eliminative subsystem, between the affiliative subsystem, achievement subsystem. We try to maintain a balance by continuously striving 
in order to maintain an equilibrium. So that is what Johnson believed. So these are the two assumptions. Now let us study two more assumptions. What is the third assumption? A behavioral system which requires and results in some degree of regularity, some degree of consistency in behavior is essential. It is essential to man as it is functionally significant as an individual and in social life. There should be some regularity. There should be some consistency in our behavioral system. Like for example, today I behave in a very loving way. Okay, but say tomorrow with the same person for no reason, if I am going to not even uh, respect that person, not even mind that particular person or bother that particular person, when a person smiles at me, if I am going to turn away from that person and walk away, then automatically you will say that no, she is not dependable, right? You will say that she is not dependable, she is not trustworthy because in a social life, Okay, as well as in an individual life, we need some regularity in our behavioral system. We need some consistency in our behavioral system. So, what Johnson is saying that, she first she told that there is, it is organized. She is saying that is essential. She believes that that regularity, that consistency is highly essential for a person in order to function well in an individual life as well as in a social life. But when that goes into a disorder, like for example, BPAD, bipolar Okay, if you are going to see BPAD or manic depressive psychosis, you find that the person behaves differently, right? Maybe few days the person is highly, you know, euphoric, whereas few days the person is going into complete depression. Okay, so that is not considered to be normal because the, we say that that person's individuality is affected. That person's social life is affected. So, Johnson says that in our behavioral system, there is some sort of consistency and she takes it in a positive note. She says that is essential for an individual life as well as for a social life. So, that is the third assumption. What is the last assumption? Systems balance is reflecting. If there is a balance, what does it reflect? It reflects adjustment. It reflects adaptation, which are successful adaptation, successful adjustment. So, whenever a system is in balance, Okay, when every, all the seven subsystems or the eight subsystems, when is it in, when it is in balance, it indicates that there is successful adjustment, there is successful adaptation. So, these are the four assumptions which as a student, you should study for your exam. So, what does Johnson's behavioral system model assume? What is Johnson's assumptions? Number one, she believed every subsystem is organized, every subsystem is integrated, every subsystem is in, interdependent okay and they are functioning like that okay that is the first assumption she said the second assumption what she said was like a system is trying to achieve a balance how we all try to achieve that balance because we continuously we are striving in order to maintain this equilibrium it is not that passively everything goes well Actively, we are trying, a behavioral system is trying in order to achieve that state of equilibrium. The third assumption is, she said, this uh, regularity, some sort of regularity, some sort of consistency in every subsystem is considered to be essential for a proper individual life, for a proper social life. And what is the last assumption? She said, a balanced system is actually indicating a successful adjustment and successful adaptation. So, these are the four assumptions which are easy to understand and you can remember it for your exam. Now, let us discuss about her assumptions. Okay. So, let us take the keyword from each point in assumption. Number one, it is organized, it is interdependent. Let us connect it with the third point. Because it is organized, because it is interdependent, because there is some sort of regularity, what is going to happen? The, the individual life and the social life is going to be well. Okay. That is essential according to Johnson. The second point what is being told here is, we are trying to continuously maintain our equilibrium. So, when that is going to be successful, when that balance is achieved, it indicates that there is a successful adjustment and successful adaptation. So, this, this is the four assumptions which you can 
remember next is propositions what are the propositions according to johnson's behavioral system model number 1 she believed that a behavioral system manages its relationship with the environment which is self maintaining as long as the conditions remain in order that is it is self maintaining we don't want anybody's help okay because our behavioral subsystem is in balance we are maintaining a good relationship with the environment only you can do it by yourself as long as the conditions remain order when everything is when all the conditions are remaining in order the person doesn't need the help of anybody else okay when everything is when the situations when the environment everything is in order automatically an individual system is found to be self maintaining which means this behavioral system this man doesn't need anybody's help self maintaining as long as the conditions remain in order number 2 she believed balance is essential for effective and efficient function of the person it is a proposition she is telling as long as the condition is fine a person can have self maintenance number 2 as long as there is a balance there will be effective function there is an efficient function so, so one way you can test and see so if there is no proper balance okay there will not be effective functioning there will not be efficient functioning so it is like if for that if there is balance there is effective functioning okay if there is balance there is efficient functioning if everything is in order then the person needs Uh, can be met by self maintenance number 3 a lack of balance that is a continuation of point number 2 a lack of balance either in the structural requirement or in the functional requirement will lead to poor health so it is like you know you say that if everything is in order a person is self maintaining okay if there is balance there is effective and efficient functioning if there is no balance within the subsystems it can lead to poor health and the last proposition what johnson said is nursing is an external regulatory force that can help that can act in order to restore the balance to the behavioral subsystem so when a person is out of balance who is going to act over there a nurse so johnson believed that nursing is an external regulatory force who is going to act in order to restore the balance okay because the balance is out of balance a person is out of balance so what is a nursing do she is an external i'm sorry external regulatory force who is going to help in order to restore the balance to the behavioral subsystem so these are the propositions according to johnson's model so what are the propositions according to johnson's behavioral system model number 1 when everything is in order when all as long as the conditions in, is in order a behavioral system is can do self maintenance if there is balance what will come effective functioning is there efficient functioning is there if it is out of balance it will lead to poor health so when uh, when there is something out of balance who is going to help nursing nursing is an external regulatory force who is going to act in order to restore the balance i hope so far the uh, session is clear so i am discussing about the assumptions and the propositions according to johnson's behavioral system model the first thing what we discussed was the assumptions okay so in the assumptions we understood that every subsystem is working interdependently it is working in an integrative way right and what is this system trying to do always it is trying to keep up its equilibrium it is striving in order to keep up its equilibrium and johnson believed that a little bit of regularity a little bit of consistency is going to do good not only in individual life but also in social life coming on to propositions what did johnson say johnson says conditions it is like a condition where she is telling as long as everything is well a behavioral subsystem can do self maintenance balance if there is balance there is effective functioning there is efficient functioning if something is out of balance it can lead to poor health and that is a time when nursing is going to step in an external regulatory force who is coming in order to restore the balance i hope it is clear okay so that is about assumptions and proposition now let us move on to meta paradigm now this is going to teach us what exactly is 
uh, Johnson's view about a person, about health, environment and nursing. So first let us see what is a view about a human being or a person. Now from this I understand. You remember that picture? Now in that picture what Johnson said external stress and force can come. The systems can you know effective coping, ineffective coping. So from that picture itself we know that a person is an open system. See how many theorists have said that uh, human being is an open system. Do you remember that? Uh, I think uh, Roy said, Roy's uh, adaptation model, Roy said that a person is an open system. Okay. Similarly, if you're going to see Roger, Roger said that always there is an interaction with the environment and she believed that a human being is an open system. King believed human being is an open system because King always says that there is an influence, you know, there is a perception of the nurse, perception of the patient. So they are, they can be influenced, right? So that is an open system. Again, now we study Johnson's theory. We study that a person is an open system. According to Dorothy Johnson, a person is an open system. This point we have already studied. There is an organized, interrelated, interdependent subsystem. So it is an open behavioral system. A man is a complete system with a lot of subsystems. So she believed a man is a behavioral system with lot of subsystems which are organized, which are interdependent, which are interrelated. So you can write that by yourself because once you understand the theory, meta paradigm writing is very easy. She believed the whole of the human organism is greater than the sum of its parts. So again the same, same point we have studied in Roger's theory. She also believed that the sum is greater than the parts. Okay, so same way here Johnson says that the behavioral system is found to be greater compared to the sum of its parts. So, if the system is greater than the parts. So, that is what uh, Johnson believed and according to Johnson, these behavioral systems are orderly, they are repetitive, they are organized. We have already discussed that. Striving to make continual adjustments, okay, in order to achieve that equilibrium, what we studied in assumption. So, she believes that a human being is always trying to continuously adjust in order to maintain a state of equilibrium. She also said that this human being is a biopsychosocial being who has an vulnerability to instability in one of the subsystems due to stress. So she understood that. She said a patient or a human being is always vulnerable to instability. We are trying for, we all are striving, okay, we all are striving for balance, we all are striving for equilibrium, but when one of the subsystem is going to be affected, a person can go into instability. There is a chance for vulnerability. Okay. So, that is what Johnson believed is a human being. So, she believed human being is a person, is a behavioral subsystem. Within this behavioral subsystem, there are so many behavioral systems with so many subsystems and all these subsystems are organized, they are interrelated, they are interdependent. Fine. We all are striving in order to maintain equilibrium okay and we are trying continuously by adjusting okay to all the stressors in order to maintain that equilibrium again a person or a human being is prone to instability especially even when one of the subsystem is affected a person can go into instability let us talk about a child who is not receiving love and affection from the family say the child is growing up in a very isolated environment Okay, this child's affiliative subsystem or dependency subsystem can be affected and that can end up with instability. All the other subsystems can be affected because of the psychological trauma what a child is facing. Right, so this is what is the view of Johnson about a human being. It's very easy, nothing to buy hard, simple behavioral system, so many subsystems, everything is integrated, everything is working together, striving continuously for equilibrium. There is a chance for instability even if one of the subsystem is affected. Now let us move on to the meta paradigm of environment. Okay, what is the environment or environment? 
it consists of all the elements that are not a part of individual's behavioral system but that which can influence the system and that which can serve as a source of sustainal imperatives okay so what is an environment environment is it behavioral subsystem is not environment she made it very clear other than all these seven subsystems or eight subsystems any other element which can influence the system becomes the environment she made it more clear in the next slide she believed that there are two types of environment external and internal what is an external environment she said external environment can be people they can be objects or any phenomena which can permeate the boundary of behavioral system like for example say in ingestive subsystem a person is not eating for two days okay maybe because of some chronic illness or maybe because of some uh, maybe some psychological some you know sort of abuse or something like that emotional trauma a person is not eating say her uh, ingestive subsystem is getting affected so that is and you know uh, maybe because of some illness or something you can say it is an external uh, it comes under external environment maybe it is the uh, say loss of a loved one okay or loss of a loved pet pet animal now all those things are external influences which can affect a person's behavioral subsystem so it can be people it can be objects it can be any situations or phenomena which can permeate the boundary of the behavioral system and which can affect it what is an internal environment nothing from outside it can be internalized variables like maybe it is a physio physiology as i said you some illness temperament ego age some developmental capacities attitudes self concept okay variables that influence set choice and action so we have studied in structural requirements that we have a set choice action okay drive set choice and action okay so anything which can affect my uh, structural variables or anything which is internal okay outside everything is okay but uh, i am not feeling good so i am not eating or maybe uh, you know i perceive that somebody is not uh, caring okay so all those things are internal things maybe it is my ego maybe it is my attitude maybe it is my temperament maybe it is my own thinking of you know choice set goals etc so this is what johnson believed is environment so it's very easy according to johnson's uh, environment is of two types what is an environment anything other than the behavioral subsystem which can influence the system is called as environment two types of environment one is external another one is internal what is external environment any object any people any phenomena which can affect me my behavioral system i mean the subsystems is called as external what is internal internal variables which can be physiology which can be ego psychological problems any uh, uh, developmental capacities all those things which can affect my subsystems can end up with internal environment now let us move on to the third one health what is health according to johnson who does johnson say that is a healthy person a person is considered to be healthy according to johnson if there is balance and stability in the behavioral system if all the eight subsystems are working well if there is a good bonding good uh, level of interdependency very good uh, ingestive eliminative sexuality aggressive subsystem achievement subsystem you know or if everything is going to be in order if there, if there is a balance if there is a stability within the behavioral subsystems then she will say that person is healthy okay so that is health very easy according to johnson last one is nursing what is nursing already we studied who is a nurse a nurse is an external regulatory workforce what is this lady going to do she is going to step into a patient's when a patient's behavioral subsystem is unstable when it is not stable this external regulatory force is going to step in and help to restore the balance or help to maintain the balance okay so that is nursing so let us read and see it is an external regulatory force to preserve the organization preserve the integration at an optimal level at a maximum level under whose condition 
in which the behavior constitutes a threat to physical health, social health. So whenever there is a threat, whenever there is instability, okay, whenever there is an illness, an external regulatory force we stepping in in order to restore the balance is nursing according to Johnson. So she believed that patient is a behavioral system for a nurse, whereas for a medicine, they view patient as a biological system. So she believed doctors are there to take care of the biological systems, nurses are there to take care of the behavioral system. So that is how she differentiated nursing profession from that of the physician. So she believed medicine looks into the biological aspect, nursing is going to look into the behavioral aspect. What is the goal of nursing? As I told you earlier, it is to restore the balance, it is to maintain the balance, maintain the stability, maintain the integrity, maintain the effective functioning, maintain the efficient functioning of a system. So it's very easy, meta paradigm according to Johnson. Okay, I hope you will agree with me if I'm going to say the meta paradigm is very easy, right? Now, because number one, what we discussed was a human being. See, according to Johnson, who is a human being? Human being is a behavioral system with a lot of subsystems where there is organization, integration, interdependency, inter related. Then what is uh, environment according to Johnson? Environment is anything which can influence this behavioral system is you know uh, the environment. Two types are there. External is outside, internal is within. Number three, who is a healthy person according to Johnson? A person is considered to be healthy if there is balance, if there is stability, if there is integrity, if there is efficient, effective functioning in all the behavioral subsystems. Who is a nurse? An external regulatory force will be stepping in in order to maintain the balance, in order to restore the balance, especially when something is going into instability, is called as a nurse. Okay, and uh, we are concentrating on the behavioral subsystem, whereas medicine people are concentrating on the biological subsystems. Now let us look and analyze the strength and the limitation. What is the good thing about Johnson's behavioral system model? Especially this is one of the, I think, only, uh, one of the best theories uh, which has explained nursing's or nurses' role from a behavioral point of view. That is what we should admire in each of the nurse theorists. They look at each phenomena, okay? According to Johnson, she has given so much of importance to the behavioral aspect, which I think uh, not many other theories have given. Actually, Johnson's behavioral system theory is a mother theory. From that mother theory, a lot of offspring theories have come up, which has discussed about the behavioral aspects of children, behavioral aspects of, you know, uh, patients with psychiatric uh, disorders, like that, you know. So there are certain uh, many other theories which have come, but the main, you know, that mother theory is Johnson's behavioral system theory. So we should appreciate that her theory is, uh, you know, uh, very important because it, it is the only theory which has explored in detail looking a patient from the behavioral aspect. And then number two, the strength is this theory can be used across the lifespan, across the cultures because it is a generalizable theory. A person who is living in Asia or Africa or Australia, anywhere, we all have the same subsystems. Okay? Okay. We all are human beings with the same, you know, uh, need of various subsystems starting from affiliative till achievement or restorative subsystem. So it is generalizable across lifespan, generalizable across all cultures. Now, this theory has been a tool or a guide in order to motivate a patient or motivate or guide a patient's behavior, especially when they are undergoing distress okay so this is one of the theories which can help a patients to cope up with the behavior especially during their illness or during their distress so these are the main strength of johnson's theory number one credit goes to her behavioral you know that focus number two generalizable number three it is a guide to motivate the patient especially uh, their behaviors during their distress or illness coming on to limitations 
uh, to be uh, frank, there are a lot of limitations for this theory. Number one, uh, what usually the critic says is that this model is very individual oriented, which means what they are trying to tell is that you cannot apply this uh, theory for a group of people. So in that aspect, if you're going to see Imogen M. King's theory is all, you know, she is very, uh, I always admire King for that because King is a person who has already, you know, who is very clear about certain things. She says that uh, when you read the meta paradigm according to King's theory, you will read that uh, a person uh, can be an individual, can be a family, can be a group or a community. Okay, so she includes everybody in her theory. But Johnson, if you're going to see, she's focusing on one individual. Individual is a behavioral system with so many subsystems. So there is a critic that it is a very individual oriented theory. It cannot be applied to group. Number two, since it is an individual oriented theory, you cannot apply it to a family because family is only coming as a part of the environment. That is the external environment of the patient. It cannot be applied to caregivers or family. Then number three is that it does not define the expected outcomes when one of the system is affected. I think that is one of the one of the point which we have to acknowledge because she says that uh, 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 affiliative subsystem, she talks about dependency, but uh, Johnson has not said what will happen if affiliative subsystem is not in balance. Okay, what are the consequences? That is not being told. Okay, she has not specified it. When one subsystem is affected, what are the consequences, expected outcomes? That is not being dealt in this theory. So that is one flaw or uh, that is one small limitation according to Johnson's model. Then number four, she fails to include she, and uh, fails to give importance to nursing process in her theory. See, there are uh, very good uh, theorists who always uh, uh, says that uh, how to apply it in the nursing process. They give a very clear direction how this should be applied in nursing process, especially Betty Newman's theory. You remember that three-part uh, nursing process, what we have discussed, uh, Betty Newman's theory. Same way, if you're going to see King's theory, uh, Roy's adaptation model. Here all, you can pull that theory into nursing process. But uh, here, a nursing process can be told, but it is a very uh, vague or a very generalized way you can uh, understand the concept. But uh, specifically how to apply this in a nursing process is not being dealt by Johnson. Okay, so she has uh, failed to include that aspect of nursing process or to give importance to nursing process in her theory. And uh, certain aspects are very difficult to test especially. But uh, let me tell you, though I read this point, there are a lot of research studies which have been done using uh, Johnson's behavioral systems theory. A lot of research studies have been done. But still, uh, one problem is whenever you say or talk about behavioral system, it is very difficult to say, what is balance what is instability you know whenever you say uh, when a when a system is in not in balance the effective functioning will reduce but you know uh, very specifically it's you cannot say that it is a very highly specific uh, uh, propositions which can be uh, tested by hypothesis so again because the uh, you know the, the concept is about the behavior so there are certain uh, propositions which are a little bit difficult to test by doing research studies and you see so many limitations are being pointed out and uh, uh, Johnson always focuses on uh, instability. She's talking about uh, uh, nursing as a workforce which is coming into uh, play when a system is going into instability. But uh, never once she told that uh, what is the role of a nurse when a person is stable, which means uh, she, uh, she, in her perception, nursing is something uh, which acts when a person is sick, when a person is ill, when a person is having a behavioral problem. But uh, so, you know, there is a lack of use of this theory. She has not spelled out that clearly how it can be used for health promotion or uh, disease prevention. That was not being uh, covered in Johnson's behavioral system model. So she focuses only on hospitalized people or people with behavioral disorder. 
So these are the various limitations of Johnson's theory. So you can uh, think like this and write for exam. One is it is individual oriented. So group cannot be used. Family cannot be used. Okay, then she has not clearly told uh, when one subsystem is affected, what will happen? That is not being addressed. Okay, then uh, she is focusing more on uh, uh, secondary prevention. She is not focusing on primary prevention, uh, more only for sick people. Okay, so that is another one uh, problem and uh, uh, it is difficult to test and uh, little importance is only given to nursing process. Now let us go on to the next part. So strength is over, limitations are over. Now let us talk about a little bit about the critic of a theory or analysis. So the concepts are interrelated. Sure, the concepts are interrelated. If you are going to see the behavioral system, the subsystem, the stress are, the tension, all those things, equilibrium, stability, all those concepts are interrelated. It gives meaning. It gives meaning. When you study this theory, overall when you study you are able to understand what exactly she is trying to tell. So it is interrelated. It is logical in nature. You can do it inductive or directive reasoning. You can uh, derive a lot of research studies and understanding based on this theory. It is simple but you know so many concepts are there in this theory and uh, I as I told you earlier research studies are conducted applying Johnson's theory but one problem in this theory is um, when you are going to give care okay like seven subsystems so a nurse will be focusing on ingestive subsystem or say uh, affiliative subsystem it is like uh, what uh, the critics are telling is that uh, the nurse's attention is drawn to a particular subsystem rather than to the whole system i hope it is clear that is uh, johnson said that eight subsystems are there so when one subsystem is affected the nurse is coming to help that subsystem to come into balance so it is like you say that there is a fragmentation of care or there is a fractionalized care instead of you say a holistic care john Johnson is focusing on a fractionalized care. Okay, so all these things are uh, small, small critics, you know. Uh, however good a theory look, however good a, a conceptual model or a theoretical model looks, always critic will be there. This could have been better, that could have been better, right? So same way in Johnson's behavioral system theory, these are the small, small uh, critic parts which comes, okay, that uh, uh, focuses on fractionalized uh, the subsystem. So uh, the holistic thing is lost okay when you are applying johnson's behavioral system theory and then one another uh, critic is there is an authenticated schematic diagram uh, by johnson see there is one diagram which i showed you in the beginning of the video okay only that uh, only that model is given by dorothy johnson so what these people are telling is that uh, she should have given a wider uh, you know so many concepts are there see the next thing uh, johnson has developed multiple concepts then why don't you show a diagram connecting each and every concept relationship so that it would have been more clear where is tension where is uh, equilibrium where is stability okay uh, where is that uh, whole behavioral system uh, so so many things are missing so they are saying that since so many concepts are there if there was a diagram which can link everything and bring then it could have been better okay so that is an uh, critic or an analysis part so with that we complete that analysis so so far we have discussed about assumptions we discussed about the propositions we discussed about the strength of the theory it's a very good theory behavioral aspect uh, but uh, limitations so many limitations are there analysis aspect uh, a diagram that is what the critics are pointing out fractionalized care fragmented care etc the last portion nursing process okay how to apply this johnson's theory in nursing process so in this video i am only giving an outline of uh, you know how johnson's theory can be put into the nursing process this is not an application video or uh, this is not a video in detail regarding only the nursing process okay so how to use this uh, theory in nursing process just an outline so the first thing is nursing assessment in nursing assessment what we have to do is we have to assess all the eight subsystem so that is what we are expected to do when you are applying nursing process in johnson system what you should do you should assess the affiliative system dependency sexuality all those subsystems should be assessed number two 
diagnosis. So we know that next thing is nursing diagnosis. So nursing diagnosis is, it is found to be general because uh, Johnson has proposed four categories. This is something very unique only for Johnson's behavioral system theory. So we should give a lot of care when we are studying this theory. Nursing diagnosis when you are writing. Johnson said there are four words, four categories of words. What are they? Insufficiency, discrepancy, incompatibility and dominance. I will tell you how it is. Insufficiency is when a system is not getting enough of something. That becomes insufficiency. Discrepancy is uh, the system is not working to the maximum. Optimum working is not there. Incompatibility is there is a conflict between two or more subsystems. Total eight are there. No? So, when there, when there is a conflict between the subsystems, you call that as incompatibility and what is dominance when we when one system is always used you call that as dominance so very simple i'll tell you how to write a nursing diagnosis according to johnson uh, say a person is uh, 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 let us say that if a person is having a major depressive disorder okay uh, an easy example okay so i know that uh, in major depression the main subsystem which is affected is affiliative subsystem okay so what is affiliative subsystem here it can either be insufficiency or it can be discrepancy in affiliative subsystem now if this depression is caused by an internal problem okay everything in the family is fine friends is fine everything is okay but uh, internally there is a problem i may write it as discrepancy in affiliative subsystem suppose if there is a uh, over dependency okay let me say that there is oh, the child or uh, adult is highly dependent on another person okay in dependency subsystem we have studied that it, the best thing is interdependent it should not be highly dependent or highly independent okay so suppose if a person is highly dependent so there what i will write is dominance dominant dependency subsystem dominant dependency subsystem suppose if a patient is uh, suffering from say diarrhea okay so there also it can either be discrepancy or it can be dominance. Now, suppose if the patient is having a gastrointestinal disorder and so the patient is going to be highly dependent, okay? Or when one subsystem is going to be in a problem, it creates a problem to another subsystem, the word what we are going to write is incompatibility, okay? So, incompatible whatever subsystem that you have to write. So, uh, Johnson said that in these eight subsystems, whenever you write a nursing diagnosis, you have to use four words. What are they? Insufficiency, say affiliative subsystem, insufficiency, ingestive subsystem, dominant, eliminative subsystem, etc. Okay. So, insufficiency, discrepancy, incompatibility, dominance. So, for all these eight subsystems, that is how we are going to write the nursing diagnosis okay next is planning and implementation the one problem what we find in johnson's behavioral system theory is uh, johnson has not given importance to the patient's patient's input okay everything is uh, you know assessed by the nurse everything uh, all the nursing actions are planned and implemented by the nurse it is a nurse driven model i think uh, uh, previous philosophies all if you're going to see it, everything is like that uh, like for example nightingale's theory henderson's theory uh, abdullah's theory in all those things if you're going to see everything the you know the situation is assessed by the nurse uh, she formulates a problem or a diagnosis and she is going to do the implementation you know this theory is like that the patient's input is very less Okay, so it's a little bit difficult to plan and implement because there is a lack of client's input. So the plan is mainly focusing on nurse's actions in order to modify a patient's behavior in order to maintain that homeostasis. And uh, again, in planning and implementation, she brought in that functional requirement. So functional requirement, you remember, protection, nurturing, stimulation. Okay, now uh, say for example, when we write the nursing interventions, okay, in the plan of action, all of us know that we are writing certain interventions uh, to protect, to nurture, to stimulate. Protecting is what? Protecting from noxious stimuli. Now, a person who is highly prone to seizure, 
okay a person who is a patient who is highly prone to seizure when he is hospitalized we do write a nursing diagnosis risk for seizures and what are the interventions we are writing we are trying to protect the patient we say that uh, the bed rails the patient should be the bed rails should always be put up okay remove all the uh, you know objects which are very sharp objects should be removed away from the patient the patient's bed should be a little bit uh, you know low level bed should be given so you say so many interventions which is actually protecting a patient from noxious stimuli from injury from complications so we do write certain interventions like that there are certain interventions where we write to nurture say for example giving a high calorie diet giving a small small and frequent diet for the patient uh, maybe uh, uh, you uh, what to say uh, maybe we do certain interventions in order to uh, help the patient to uh, increase their uh, maybe to uh, increase their weight or to correct a malnutrition all those things what you do there is nurturing that is you are providing adequate input in order to sustain the behavior sometimes even reinforcement sometimes even encouragement okay providing a very good uh, encouragement or a very good positive reinforcement all those things are nurturing behaviors which are done by us as nurses and the last one is stimulation stimulation is we help the patient to grow like for example giving a health education okay giving a discharge instruction okay uh, teaching them about how to uh, do a particular procedure say for example maybe it is a uh, rail tube feeding or maybe how to do a uh, uh, intermittent self catheterization all those things are stimulation where you want the patient to grow in certain aspects okay so uh, what i would like to tell students is uh, we do write already in all our nursing care plans we all we usually write all these things we write certain things about nurturing certain things about protection certain things about stimulation so it is nothing new to us but when you are using johnson's behavioral system theory in your care plan assessment you should write which subsystem is affected nursing diagnosis you should use that four words that is uh, whether it is incompatible or discrepancy or insufficiency or dominancy of the subsystem when you're writing the plan of action you should use these words maybe you can write a subheading protection under that write the interventions nurturing under that write the interventions stimulation write the intervention so that is how you write the planning and that is how you do the implementation the last evaluation so evaluation what should a nurse do she has to reassess or reevaluate evaluate in order to find out whether the balance is being achieved or not especially if there is a baseline behavior she can compare that baseline data to the present data and she can find out whether the goal is achieved or uh, not but only problem is it is a nurse centered activity so the nurse is assessing the nurse is implementing the nurse is evaluating so the client's output is client's input is found to be very less so uh, this is uh, in brief about the complete johnson's behavioral system model okay so the first uh, uh, part we have discussed in the first video completely about the concepts and the theoretical assertions in this video we have discussed in detail about the assumptions the four assumptions according to the system okay there are assumptions related to the structure there are assumptions related to the functional requirement then we discussed about the propositions uh, everything comes like if then that is how the propositions usually are there if everything is fine this will be there if that is there if everything is in balance there will be efficient function like that propositions then we discussed about the strength of the theory it's a very good theory uh, limitations of the theory at least two three you should remember individual oriented uh, schematic diagram is uh, missing more is towards secondary uh, prevention certain hypotheses are very difficult to test okay a complete uh, uh, what will happen if one subsystem is affected johnson has not said about that so all those things that is about the limitations then we discussed about the analysis in analysis good points are there but there are certain points which says fragmented care fractionalized care uh, holistic care is missing etc then we discussed about the uh, meta paradigm in 
in detail we saw about what is a person, two environments, internal and external environment, what is health and what is nursing, what is the goal of nursing. Then at the last we have just seen how to put it in the nursing process, assessment assess the eight subsystems, diagnosis use the four categories, implementation and planning use the three functional requirement, protection, nurturing, stimulation, evaluation. Only thing is everything is nurse centered activity, client's input is found to be less okay so to conclude uh, johnson's behavioral system theory is one of the wonderful theories what we have in nursing uh, because it is the it is one of the uh, theory which has uh, looked at a patient completely from a behavioral system point of view so definitely we should acknowledge uh, uh, johnson for her creativity and for her, uh, you know, a lot of hard work, what she has done in developing this theory. And let me also tell you, from Johnson's behavioral system uh, theory, a lot of other uh, uh, nurse theorists and researchers like uh, Grubbs, okay, they all have developed uh, research instruments in order to uh, assess the behavioral uh, uh, assess the behavioral aspects in each of the subsystems. A lot of uh, you know standardized tools have been developed uh, from Johnson's behavioral system theory. Okay, so uh, that is about Johnson's behavioral system theory. I hope this uh, video is going to be useful, especially to all the students, especially to all the students who are watching this uh, session. And uh, thank you all for your uh, great support and for your great love. Thank you.